you're listening to Kayak Flyer with your host, Sean. This week we're brought to you by Tennessee Trailers, OutdoorAdventureTrailers.com. The best way to get your kayak to and from the water. Cutthroat Furled Leaders, the only leaders that I use. Cutthroat Furled Leaders are guaranteed to perform for whatever species of fish you're chasing. Check them out at CutthroatFurledLeaders.com. Save 15% promo kayak. StoneFlyNets.com, the very best in handcrafted and custom fishing nets made in the great state of Arkansas. Check out Stonefly Nets at StoneFlyNets.com. Guys, I am so happy to be back with you. Um, we've had uh, a couple of weeks where we just really haven't had a podcast, and things are looking really well and really looking up. And I know the past two weeks we have had some great guests, and tonight I think I have some really quality guests. But before we get to them, I want to give a quick show update. I talked to Kyle last night. I know a lot of you were afraid that Kyle and I had broken up because there hadn't been a new Drinking on the Fly episode on YouTube. Kyle has been overrun. Um, Before last night, the last time I talked to him, he had 3,000 flies he's promised me that he's done and we're going to start getting back with drinking on the fly and we're talking fly tying with drinking on the fly but we're talking fly tying tonight with jared and jessica from the fly armory and they do something really neat i think you're really going to enjoy it welcome to the show guys thank you thank you now i'm i'm a big dummy and i'm not gonna lie i'm a big dummy when it comes to feathers, it's schlapping. That's that's what I use. I tie, everybody that's listening to this show, I tie big bass flies. I tie big flies that piss off big fish. <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it. Um, marabou and schlapping, I've started using some goose biot as I started to tie some more nymphs. I've never used partridge. I've never used quail. And I know that uh, Patty Lucan was talking to me down at the Salbug Roundup. And I said, oh, you went to the Fly Armory? And she goes, yes, I think this is a better alternative to Partridge. So I wanted to start there. And then I wanted to talk to you about some flies that I could use these with. Yeah. Well, if, if you had to pick one feather, you're doing pretty good with uh, Schlappen anyway. So I, I can't argue with that. That's a good choice. But uh, so with the the partridge, uh, there was a lot of shortages there for a while, and a lot of people couldn't even get it. And so we were kind of messing around with the quail, and I was just like, "This is almost everything that partridge can do, and then some." Um, with with partridge, you have a limitation of color potential. Uh, you're you're uh-huh. you're stuck to that like gray and brown tones. And uh, the only partridge species really that could change to like, say, a white would be a, uh, is it? Ptarmigan. Ptarmigan. Um, And during the winter, they'll turn white, but even then they'll still have some splotches, splotchy areas on them, and they're not entirely all white. But uh, with the quail, we we started tying with that, and we're like, this can do everything partridge can do, and then some, because we have so many color options and capabilities. Uh, it's very soft quills. They they palmer great. They there's a lot you can do with it. Yeah, and I was gonna buy some at Salbug, but then I thought I'd get you on the podcast and strong arm you into sending me one because when I that's a joke. But when I was I was looking at those, um, that wasn't a joke. Uh, but when I was looking at those, I mean, you had so many different textures and colors, and and they were awesome. And if you guys are listening to the podcast, I would highly suggest you go over to YouTube. Um, but the quail was was so much different, and I've tied with pheasant. Um, the only time I've done anything with quail is shoot and eat them. Um, I'm an outdoorsman. I like to do upland bird when I can. Um, pheasant makes a great tying feather. What is it specifically? What do you use your quail for, or where do you supplement it for part- partridge? Uh, help a guy like me that doesn't do a lot of, of feather tying, a lot of uh, smaller fly tying. Well, um, so in the, the game of being a partridge substitute or even a partridge replacement, 
Um, soft tackles. Um, that's probably the biggest, biggest game in Partridge is soft tackles. And pulling that concept of a soft tackle, like your collared nymphs, having collared nymphs is probably probably some of your biggest uses for a partridge. And that's where the quail can really come in and and uh, really compete, especially. But um, um, I've been tying everything from in between. And Jesse does a lot of the, the soft tackles, the smaller flies and, and stuff in particular. But um, I've gone up to tying like a, I guess you, what you could call a really complicated woolly bugger with the quail, um, oh. all the way up to a, a, a feather game changer. I don't, uh, for those who can see, um, here's one in particular. Uh, it's, it's even got oh. the tent and shingle technique on top of it, but this is about a three, three and a half inch uh, feather game changer. So you can really, you can target that micro feather game changer or smaller feather game changer platform with the quail really well. Well, I know my audience gets tired of me talking about how much I love feather game changers. <laughs> um, I think they are the berries. And I'm, I'm very interested in, in ordering from you because that is right in my wheelhouse for smallmouth bass. It's, it's such a, it's such a unique pattern uh, that, that Blaine, Blaine really has is, is, uh, been pushing out there, and it's it's not really a pattern, honestly. It's a platform. He's he's turned uh -huh. it. It's 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 a platform. You can tie, you can tie itty bitty. You can tie giant musky striper flies. You can you can do crayfish. You can do bait fish. You can do helgramites, nymphs, mayflies, things of that nature. It's so versatile. There's guys doing. Um, basically like lobster game changers out there and things like that. It's you, you can turn it into a Senko minnow, like a worm or, a, or like a Senko uh, worm. There's so much you can do with it. It's amazing. You know, uh, I know you guys were at Sawbug. That's where we got to meet. Um, the kid, and I say he's a kid, he was 21. He won the overall fly. And the saltwater fly. Were you guys at that dinner? No, we didn't go. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't make it to the dinner. Oh, you mi you missed out. Can I can I diverge and tell a little story real real quick? Go for it. A uh, guy that I know from Facebook named Bob and Slinger. He's agreed to come on the podcast just because sometimes we we get tired of quality guests sometimes. And um, when we were at the dinner, everybody at our table that had a beer sat the empty in front of him. And when they got done with the dinner, the guy came over and patted him on the shoulder and said, you can take some beer home if you need to. Um, but the sow bug was, was such a great experience. And the when we talk about the game changer and the feather game changer and some of those things, you're talking about all the different things you can do with it. It just, I think it just blows your mind because the kid that won, as I, as I before I diverge, the kid that won, was tying a um, pine squirrel um, grabbers or pinchers, mm -hmm. and then he was doing a quail feather body wrap, and he was doing it on I think a size six hook, and I came home and my problem was my my pheasant feathers were almost too big because I was trying to tie it on a ten, and so would quail be something that I need to do with that for tying it? Would that be a better substitute for for going to that smaller size? Yeah, that that could probably do it for you, for sure. Yeah, and that's you know that that's what fly tires need to know is there are alternatives out there. And I looked at I I how many times did I walk over there like eight or nine? <laughs> we saw your spare you spare few, know. at least more than I can count on one hand. Yeah, yeah, I kept coming by them like my wife's gonna get on to me for buying this, um, but. You guys have a great product. You have an absolutely great product. And if I'm not mistaken, you don't sell through a website. Right? Uh, great. Yep. We uh, we don't currently. Dooley's Fly Fishing. Yeah. Dooley's Fly Fishing has you. Yep. And you can save 15% with promo code kayak at Dooley's Fly Fishing if you want to grab some of these great feathers, listeners. But what was your inspiration for? 
quail. I mean, that's not a bird that we always think of as being, you know, I mean, I, when I think of quail, I think of having a, a Easter lunch where everybody has their own quail. Mm -hmm. I think of quail eggs, which are really great and tasty. But how do you manage to get the quail to be in the colors you want? Um, she is the one that's the more knowledgeable one on the genetic side. So I'll let her, I'll let her bring that one up. <laughs> so we got into quail because during the pandemic, you couldn't get meat, you couldn't get eggs, you couldn't get anything. And I'm like, uh -huh. these suckers, you can hatch them. In 14 days, they're ready to butcher in um, 10 weeks, which is faster than uh -huh. any other bird. Uh -huh. So then we were starting to butcher some, and Jared's like, these feathers are really nice. And he's like, I think I want to save some of these to tie with. And I'm like, okay. So then we like just had plucked some, and that wasn't going good. And I'm like, let's just skin it and just do some skins. So our local fly shop, he contacted me and he's like, we're friends on Facebook. And he's like, hey, can you like save me a bag of those feathers? And I was like, well, I can do you one better. I said, I'll bring you a skin. And he's like, wait, you're actually doing this? And the next thing you know, he bought like 17 of them. And that's all he ties with in his fly shop now. So then we're like, what other colors can we get other than just like brown? And so I started doing my research and ordering eggs, and now we have like 500 birds. Oh, my goodness. Now, you guys, I have to admit, I always have in my, in my intro the great state of Arkansas, but that's because I'm, I'm close to Arkansas. But Missouri, we all know, is the greatest state. And you guys are, well, the outlaw Josie Wales is from Missouri. I mean, we can't forget right. that. And... Clint Eastwood at Unforgiven is, is money from uh, Missouri. I mean, we, we got, if Clint Eastwood thinks it's the greatest state, um, but whereabouts are you located in Missouri? We are like half an hour north of Roaring River State Park on okay. Highway 37. So you guys are on the western side of the state. Yep. yep. Yeah, we're, yep. we're kind of in that, that little corner, south uh, southwestern corner. Yeah, and that's a that's a great place to be because you guys have scorpions and good fishing. Yeah, <laughs> we there's there there's, is scorpions. We got all sorts of critters, <laughs> and there's so much water. It's it's amazing how much water, and and we're in that little uh, delta. Well, I mean, honestly, we're really close to Kansas too. But I mean, you you have Kansas, you have Missouri, you have Arkansas and Oklahoma. And there's and there's so much water in this little corner. It's it's amazing. Don't even get me started talking about that little corner. I, if I were going to move anywhere that wasn't going to be on the coast, that's where I would move. Yeah. Um, so much great fishing and so much great fly fishing. Yep. Um, so what are some of your favorite flies to tie with the quail as the main ingredient other than the game changer? Um, I'd, I'd mention the the quail, uh, the bugger, that kind of overcomplicated bugger. So uh -huh. I, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what? I've, I remember seeing this pattern called a, a Brahma bugger and oh, yes. they take just tons and tons of Brahma hen soft tackle feathers basically. And you just, you have a marabou tail and then you just do uh -huh. tons and tons of ties of soft tackle feathers down the shank. Well, it's like, well, I'm going to play around with that a little bit and, and it could be totally changed from what I've done to it. But I just take like a few wraps of, say, Palmer chenille um, in the size small, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. run some lead lead down the shank, and then uh, I'll do like three wraps of Palmer chenille, and I like to take two quail feathers, wrap those at the same time as like a kind of like an umbrella effect, similar to what you would do with a, a game changer, essentially. But uh, right. and then I just repeat that down the shank, that process probably about four or five times, and uh, it it gives you this really Honestly, the best way to describe it, it's just a chunky bugger. And you have this bulk uh, and density there with, with the material that, you know, with with uh, how flies act in the water, I think that would be uh, hydrodynamics or something like the, along those lines. But uh, you have that density and you get resistance. And uh, so with that resistance of that bulk, you get a different dimension of swim action versus your average 
woolly bugger, we'll say, you know, you're usually fishing one that's like unweighted or maybe right. a bead head or a cone head or just lead wire. But for, for the most part, you're looking at that, that single dimension of movement that just, you know, you, you strip the line and the, the fly just follows the line. Or if it has weight, it, 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 you know, you lift it up and then it drops back down. But you break you break those two dimensions of movement into a third dimension of movement where you can start going left and start going right and it kind of kind of kicks and wiggles outside that that barrier. That sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, that really does. I mean, and I I, I have to confess, and I know you guys are the same way. If you tie flies, you see everybody says. What fly should I tie for this fish? And the answer is a woolly bugger. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in a size four or if it's, you know, in a size four off. Yeah. You know, um, Break out the, the, the woolly bugger. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the woolly bugger is a great fly. And if, if you can, if the quail works that well for that, it's going to work for everything else. I mean, talking about you're you're saying we can use quail for tying heads on the prince nymphs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. You could, and and there's so much on a quail. Like if I pull out a full quail skin, I could have anything from, uh, depending upon the skin and how much of the the that kind of top, back of the head feathers that are present on the skin, if those are there, um, you could be tying down to a twenty two. Or probably even smaller if you, you really wanted to. Um, I I avoid tying smaller than a ten if I can. I <laughs> I think that's good. If I, if I have to tie a ten, I did pretty good. But I I'm personally I'm a big fly guy. Um, but, uh, yeah. but you can you could tie you could tie in tails on on the uh, basically like with a, like a pheasant tail. You have those little fibers of the pheasant tail out there. Mm -hmm. But you could do that with the quail. Um, say like, um, like with Euro nymphing, for, for example, they do those little few little fibers hanging out the, the tail end of the fly. And then uh -huh. you just do some thread wraps and maybe a little bit of dubbing or whatever you, you could from, from Euro to Tenkara to, um, to streamer fishing and tying to big, bigger nymphs and having collars. Um, you could cut, you know, you can take a feather and you can kind of cut a V shape. Or, or cut out a portion of the feather and you basically have a, a shell back and you maybe put a little bit of UV glue on there and you've just created a shell back. You could turn, turn a quail feather into a shell back real easy. Um, matukas, um, some of the feathers in there, you could tie smaller scale matukas. Um, there's, there's so much you could do with it. Um, carp flies, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get as crazy with it as you want to. I mean, these these kind of little little feather game changers. I plan on throwing these at at, at redfish and and snook um, when I get a chance. Uh, I really want to throw them at uh, speckled sea trout. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could get a tarpon to eat one if I really wanted. If if I had a chance, it. it... You're making my heart go pitter patter. <laughs> I mean. I love that. The, the possibilities I are, mean, it's, are endless. It, it sounds like a feather that has been largely overlooked, mm -hmm. is what it sounds like to me. Yep. Um, have, what's the what? What has been? I mean, I mean, I know Dooley's picked you up, and and Nick is a wonderful guy. I mean, he's a great guy, and he's doing some really neat things with this fly shop. What has been the response? I know you're not big enough to be pushing out to some of the big, big, big places yet, but what has the response been? Because you guys went from being really kind of unknown to boom, you're at Salbug and I'm seeing you in a lot of places. We've we've done some pretty cool networking with just a few people here and there and, and then we kind of started playing around with some some of the social media game. Which I mean, we were just like, we need to play around with this social media because it's it's a thing. It really is, and mm -hmm. especially as a business front, you can reach out and connect people. Um, I have uh, we we have quail skins in a fly shop um, in Tennessee, um, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, um, Smoky Mountain Angler. Which 
Is that the one that's like back? You have to go back into the shady part of the area I, off the main strip and go in. I, because I've been to that. I've, I don't know. <laughs> I've I've never been it's there. Like the shady part of town. <laughs> it's like, mm, you know. I, I I couldn't tell you. I, I haven't been there. I, I just know uh, the manager is uh, Chad Fouts. He's he's the manager of the okay. fly shop, and he saw what we had, and he's like, "Dude, I need these. Like, I I need these." Yeah. And I was just like. He was well, like getting aggravated. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm trying to get ready for a show, and I don't want you to steal all my inventory. We were trying to get ready for Salbug, and I was like, we were freaking out. And then he's like, please, please, like, do I have to get on my knees and beg? Like, please. <laughs> you, you guys don't have to. You don't have to give me any numbers. I'm not looking for that. But what was the response at Salbug? Because I saw you. Friday morning. I did. I wasn't there Thursday. I saw you Friday morning. So I don't know what you brought in Thursday. What was the response when you left? Because um, I was there with Rick from Oasis Fly Ventures, mm-hmm. and uh, Rick was making dubbing brushes, and I was making flies, and we were, we were showing stuff off, and we were having a really good time. He, he and I had a great time. Salbug was awesome. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure. That I'm going to go ahead and go there next year as a tire, and Kyle Ludwig is going to come with me. Um, so we may have to get together on drinking on the fly and do something together if you guys are going to be back down there to sell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think we could make something really happen down there. But what was your response there with people who hadn't maybe encountered it yet? And I, like I said, I don't need numbers as far as how much you sold or anything like that, but what was the response like down there? It, it was like unbelievable. Yeah. It, <laughs> That's it, all I can say. It, it, it kind of blew my mind. I was just blown away how supportive people were there. I mean, I mean, not only did we get a lot of the, like, this is a geriatrics, hosted event you know and it's good to see you young blood getting in here finally <laughs> but, i mean we uh we it was fun it was it was just it was so good to hear that i'm, I'm laughing because i was told the same <laughs> exactly. thing exactly yeah like this, this, the, the guy beside me god bless him he was like 98 years old and he was tying on a size 22 hook and i'm sitting there with a size four uh, size four hot going how do you see that <laughs> Yep. Your, your, I think your fly could fit through the, the hook eye of mine. <laughs> it was so bad. And he was like laughing at me. He's like, you think that hook's big enough? <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting my balls busted by a guy who's like just got out of a nursing home. You know what I mean? I mean, I hate to be like that. But I mean, you know, my dad was in the nursing home. I'm just saying. It was, it, they're with the Tower of Beer. Uh-oh. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was hilarious because you had a lot of older guys there and then you had a huge amount of young guys mm-hmm. yep. and we it was just it was awesome the support we had like um we we had some people that were just like quail huh how is that to partridge and we're like well let's show you and we started showing them the colors yep. and then it was just like you could see people were just like their wheels were turning i mean the the, the gears were, were were stripping out they were burning so fast i mean it was people were were just blown away and and the support like i said we were blown away too we were just and people were coming to us and they're like i think i like this better than partridge and it's just like i love hearing that i i I absolutely love hearing that because well that's what patty told me patty came up and patty's been on the show a number of times and she's uh the head of uh ffi women connect Mm -hmm. and when patty was like Sean, have you seen this? I'm like, yeah, I've been over and talked to him. And she's like, you've got to get them on their pod, on your podcast. She goes, she goes, I love coming on your podcast. She goes, I don't go on any others. And Patty's really, Patty's super sweet. She's a great woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's like, you need them on your podcast because this is the future. And that's when I walked back over to you guys again. And I was like, did you make sure you got my card? <laughs> yeah. She was so sweet. She walked over to me. And then she was just, like, strictly talking to me. And then she's like, oh, hi, I'm so-and-so. And And she's like, sorry, I've just seen another girl in the industry. And, like, I had to come meet you. (laughs) Oh, Patty is the sweetest thing in the world. And she is all about getting ladies into fly fishing. So, Jess, 
do you fly fish? Yes, I have been fly fishing since I was a kid. Oh my goodness. I actually grew up in Alaska. And so (laughs) we would like not poor necessarily like my head dad had a good job but like we were pretty poor kids and so yeah. we would fish hunt trap whatever we had to do and that's how we fished me and all the boys and then i started tying when i was younger too because we didn't have the money to go like buy flies or a fly shop that was close so i just started mm-hmm. tying with literally whatever i had i'm like this looks like a bug and so that's what we would fish with it didn't necessarily yep. no, a pattern. I, growing up in Bollinger County, Missouri, I totally understand that. It's like a deer season is not for sport. It's for filling right. the freezer. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, and then you make use of everything that you yep. have. And so if you can tan out a deer hide, you tan it out. Yep. And squirrel tail. Oh, my goodness. Squirrel tail is amazing. and even if you don't split it, I remember being a kid, my dad would just take a pair of shears and cut off the squirrel tail, put it in about a half inch of salt in a little bitty tube and dry it yep. out. And then you had that squirrel tail to do what you wanted to do with. And so I totally understand that subsistence style, you know, and, and it's, 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 I hate to say this. I'm an English teacher. I'm a literature teacher, actually. Um, but it's that Steinbeckian style of your money goes for certain things and you live off the land for other things. Absolutely. You know, and that's what I find so amazing. And I do have to ask this before we we're almost halfway through the show. I know everybody thinks that we go so fast and we really do. But what do you do with the quail? After you have the skin, that's, that's you guys top secret them? information. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, Easter is I, this show is going to drop after Easter. We're recording beforehand, but I'm just saying that uh, we stuff our face. Quail some, yeah, quail is some good. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we that. we don't really have a whole lot of use for buying chicken at the grocery store, to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, but how do you eat the wings? Is I mean, you, you know, are the wings really small when you when you fry them <laughs> and watching the game? <laughs> it, it, it's how it's many a wings tough. did you eat? Like four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but now quail are a great resource, and they're a great resource that Missouri is trying really hard to bring back. Mm-hmm especially as a game bird but what you're doing is not what somebody's going to go and shoot and that's where jessica you're talking about the genetics right yeah how hard was it to nail down those genetics like how 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 rigorous rigorous wiggless i can't even talk anymore um how rigorous was it to get that set up and to figure that out i got on a couple facebook pages online and i'm like ooh, that's a pretty color that's a pretty color and then there's some people that have literally just been doing genetics on quail for years and so i would just stalk those pages and be like well maybe i can get this color if i do a white one and a brown one together let's see what i get and then breed those to a different color there's so many different genes and then there's some places that actually sell the hatching eggs of those genes. So mm-hmm. I would buy those and then I'd fix them with the ones that I had been breeding. So, you know, we had uh, Jesse from Grumpy Platypus. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he's, he's establishing a line of chickens. And one of the great things he told me, he goes, I've been doing dry hackle for seven years. He goes, what hackle? Within a year and a half, he had it, you know, and wet hackle. How much do you buy wet hackle versus dry hackle? Me personally, I'll take streamer hackle over dry fly hackle any day of the week. Yeah, and and that's the great thing about the quail is you're selling them at a price that you can afford to buy them. Mm -hmm. It's not like a $135 dry hackle. Oh, no. 
but it's still comparable to a a regular wet hackle. You guys have been doing a great job with your pricing, I have to say. And you're giving a product that people can use in multiple ways. Instead of buying a pheasant and buying a partridge, you guys can people can get a quail. And how has that been received from the overall public? Because you guys are really young in your business. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the number one questions we get asked is, I want to tie soft tackles with this, but I can only tie so many soft tackles out of this one skin. What can I do with the rest of the skin? So we've had fun, you know, tying different patterns that, let's see if this kind of works. Yeah. Thing. It, so. It's, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of versatility there. It just, and, and we've just, we've only focused on a certain element because, sorry, that was my phone. Um, That's there's, awesome. uh, there's so much more you could do with it, I'm sure, but we've just been, I mean, we're trying to turn birds into tying material and, and meet what just the demand that we're getting from people at, for flies as is. And then I'm, I've been trying to like these really fancy tinted and shingled style uh, feather game changers. Those take a lot of work. And it's just uh -huh. like, here's, here's some of what you can do. And it's there, there's a lot more there and there's room for other people that could probably, you know, tie with it and be like, you know, Oh, I, I did this with it instead of that. And it's just like, yeah, that's, that's totally, totally doable. I mean, for, for the different types of fishing out there, uh, other than like really big streamer stuff, like uh musky or big saltwater or, or big striper fishing, stuff like that. Yeah. That's really about the only arena that the the quail feather can't get into um we we actually sold uh, a number of skins to uh outside of the u.s into canada that was another place that we uh sold uh made a sale to was a uh, chinook wind outfitters up in north bc and she's tying uh steelhead and salmon flies with the quail you know that is really exciting because i, I mean I know a lot of guys just walk into the stream out of the Orvis catalog, and I make fun of that a lot. Um, I mainly make fun of it because Orvis podcast listens to this podcast, and then they invite people on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm feeling salty tonight. I'm not going to hold my punches. Um, you know, you guys are saying you've never been on a podcast before. I said, get ready, you're going to get like eight invites because I know who listens to the show. Um, and, and they've got more money to throw before advertising. But if you're here, you hear it first, you know. Yep. Um, but what what amazes me is the way you're describing this is I can get a quail skin. And as long as I'm not tying a giant fly, like a, even a, a one size hook. But if I'm tying a game changer that's going to be three inches, if I'm tying a, and not necessarily dry fly because we haven't discussed that yet, but any kind of wet nymph and anything in between, it sounds like the quail skin does it. And but that's you can't buy any other bird and do that with. And there's that yeah, there's there's some things you could do with say say a pheasant, but the pheasant you're going to be limited on size. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean the, the pheasant would actually allow you to do some bigger stuff but you're not going to be able to tie all that smaller stuff with with a pheasant right. um uh like you get into like your grouse or like a a, a, a partridge you're, you're going to be getting that smaller feather capacity um e even with chickens um you know those uh really uh webby soft tackle hen capes to tie feather game changers in particular but those are for bigger ones, like time, like say, uh, uh, maybe a four to possibly even up, up to like a five or a six inch feather game changer. Oh. You, you need that bigger, wider, mm -hmm. webbier feather. And, and that's, and that's where that quail is going to start to, you know, fall out of that game of competing. Cause you know, you, you get to that front hook, that, that, that kind of rear section of that, that front hook and you're needing a particular profile. And that's where the quail is going to start, you know, tapering out of that potential. 
that is the exact problem that I've fallen into with my feather game changers. Is I cannot make them look correct with a hen hackle. Yep. I just, I'm going to wind up, if I tie a bunch of them, I'm going to wind up with a bunch of feathers that I can't use for that size. And then I'm going to run out of feathers for the back. Mm -hmm. And so the quail sounds like it's the perfect combination of size, width, and amount. And, and you can, and having that full skin in front of you, you can start at one part of the bird and then you work your way through the bird because the feathers are going to get longer progressively to a certain point. Uh-huh. So you kind of have that, you know, I'm not just going to pluck feathers from here or just from here. You know, you have to like, okay, I'm here and I need to move a little bit further. All right, we're going to get these ones to move a little bit further. And so you're, you're, you're going to, but I mean, feather, feather game changers eat up a lot of feathers. So it, oh, they do. it, it you, you, you could burn up a quail skin on some feather game changers pretty quick for the bigger feathers because most of the bigger feathers on a, on a quail are going to be kind of that lower. We're going to say that like kind of midsection by the hip roughly Uh kind of area. And that's where those longer feathers are going to be or towards the back, getting towards the tail. There's going to be some longer feather fibers there, maybe a little bit around the wings that are still soft and pliable, but there's not a whole lot right there. But, um, now, one of the big things that I've talked with uh, uh, with uh, Jesse when he was on, he was supposed to come on a couple weeks ago, but he flaked out on me, which really made me mad. But he was going to talk about how you select feathers for flies. Mm-hmm. So can you maybe run me through some of the different feathers on a quail? And like if I bought a, if I bought a skin from you, what feathers would be best for what and how and sort of what all I could tie with it? Um, I'll, we can grab one right here that we. Oh, if you're watching the YouTube, you can see this now. Uh, so. yeah, if, if yeah, if you're if you're looking looking down the YouTube's, um, so up here towards the top neck of the bird, that kind of back of the head, lower neck area, you're gonna get into those really small. Uh, fibers, shorter, shorter fibered feathers, and then you can work your way across to the, they're, they're split down the chest. So the, the sides are going to be uh-huh. the belly, the chest, and then you're going to get down to the belly, lower belly. And then you have the, under the wing, you lift up under the wing and you're going to have some longer ones in that, which would be the lower midsection. And then you got down the back. Um, and you're going to, again, just have probably the, the, for the quail buggers in particular, that, that back section, that mid back section is probably my favorite area to really do a lot of those quail buggers. But uh, a lot of your, Mm -hmm. a lot of your soft tackles will come out of that top neck area. Um, Your collared nymphs can be in that kind of throat chest area. It just depends upon how big of a nymph you get into. Um, And you said you can go up to, you can go down to a size 22. There's, there's with that neck area. There's, there's some in there that, if a person had the interest in tying that daggum small, you could probably be getting into 28s and 32s, but I, I'm not personally made with that kind of interest. I tied my first size 20 zebra midge, and I was trying to, and I had no feathers that would be small enough to put a collar on it, you know, and uh, that sounds like the quail would be great for putting a collar on a size 20 zebra midge without a problem. Oh, yeah. I yep. tie size 20 quite often out of them. Just all these little top neck feathers here. Yeah. And I mean, it's a beautiful bird, but that, that color, if you're watching on, if you're not watching on YouTube, you need to look because that color is perfect for a sculpin or minnow pattern. I mean, that's a, that's not a natural color you'll get with a quail. That is a much lighter color and it's sort of, I don't want to use the word uh, just tossing around, but it's kind of a brindle color. It's a it's a blondy light brown to a little bit of dark brown, but the feather's not a consistent color. It's got a nice, it's got it's got a um, coloring. I don't know another word for it. It's got a nice mix of color to it, and that's a beautiful beautiful skin. Yep. There, it's it's like a, a modeled pattern throughout the bird, like and a ginger. and we have some that are ginger like that. We have some that could be like a creamy white color. Um, I think right now we're sitting at 
it, it's tough to say how many colors we have because we have those unique variants too. And if you start adding now, those, you charge extra for those. Uh, our our unique variants or more rare colors, they they get put into our premium grade skins. Um, okay. So so we have three grades of skins that we do. We have a grade one, a grade two, and then we have our premium. And our premiums are our rare colors or our very full feathered birds, largest birds. And then you go down to like a grade one and you're going to get a, a good skin. It's just either not as big or not as rare of a color or uh, there's not you know quite as full as, as a premium. And then you go down to a grade two. Um, it might be a skin that it could be a grade one skin, but maybe we tore it. You know, there's a hole in it or something. Um, you know, we're. Have you ever looked at uh, Kyle? Kyle Ludwig told me about this. There's a Facebook page. I can't remember what it is. Um, I've never bought anything from it, but you put in a lottery. You pick a number between one and a hundred, and they randomly pick it. And then, if you win that number, or if you tie, you have a you have another number. But um, they put those photos on the internet of that particular skin. Hmm. And so a lot of those premium skins are going and and they, they have the price up there. That's this is what it's gonna be if you want it put in. That might be a great way uh to drive folks to your Facebook, which is the fly tying armory, um, and your Instagram, the fly tying armory. But it's a neat way to see exactly what you're gonna get. And yeah, you're gonna pay a little bit more because it is a premium skin. Have you guys thought about doing anything like that? We, we've we actually, um, so we're on multiple uh, social media platforms. Like I said, you mentioned Facebook, um, uh, Instagram. Instagram. Um, we're on TikTok as well. And those. Really? Yeah. Aren't you a little old for that? <laughs> uh, you've got a full beard. We. <laughs> it, it was, it was a, it was one of those moves with the business. So I was like, all right, well, let's, let's see. And, you know, we actually have had really good luck and success on, on TikTok because really? there, there's, there's a whole community. It, it's it's unique the way TikTok uh, groups you together. And it's, you know, here's your interests. So, like, say you're into fishing. It'll, it'll group you other in, into a group of fishing people. Or if you're into hunting, fish hunting people. If you're into plants, there's plant people. There's... There's politics. There, I mean, there's whatever. I mean, there's so many little niches, and the more you interact with certain niches, you, that's what your basically your feed would be like. And I never thought about that. I guess I'm gonna have to start TikTok. It's it's really it really is unique. We had COVID and we were so bored. Yeah. Like staying in my house for ten days and not doing anything, we almost died. Okay, so you've mentioned COVID twice. You've mentioned COVID twice. COVID did not impact me other than um, my father, um, and, which is for a whole other conversation. But can I ask what your day, because I'm assuming you have day jobs. Yeah. Can you just generically tell me what your day jobs are, whether it's like retail or Yeah, I work in a vision whatever. center, a I, retail vision center. I I do solar and kind of other, okay. other odd work but uh, electrician kind of stuff so this is just a hobby that has gone wild that's a really good way of describing it yes <laughs> yeah i keep hoping my hobby will go wild and i will start producing all kinds of podcasts but that hadn't happened yet when we started what we started june of last year is when we actually started and like my local fly shop contacted us for some skins, and then was it Natural State? We Natural yeah. State contacted us, and so oh, did yeah. Dooley's. And then I was like, "Wow, oh. oh, shoot!" With this many um, people, like we better we better start like looking into the business side of this because we are lost. I'm I'm not gonna say anything bad about any fly shop. I'm not going to, but Dooley's, the way it's set up, and if you get a chance to go to Dooley's and you can order online from Dooley's, promo code kayak saves you 15%. Dooley's is a great fly shop, but if you're in Cotter. Dally's. 
natural state is the place to go because that's where you can't turn around because there is so much stuff. Um, that is a great, great fly shop. It, I mean, I don't know how many times you guys have been to Cotter, but I go to natural state and I go in and I go, here are some flies. I want you to enjoy these. And now I'm going to go buy a bunch of flies. Because the people there are so great. Yep. And the, the nice thing about Cotter is the number of fly shops you have. So if, if you're if you're kind of like us and you're just like, I need that one material. And if one doesn't have it, you can kind of shop hop. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, you, you got you got Dally's there. You got Two Rivers Fly Shop. You have Natural State Fly Shop. And, you got Copper John's. And the Copper John's with the uh, Flies and Guides now. Um, uh-huh. there's, there's a lot. The funny thing, the funny thing about Copper John's, my buddy and I rolled up there cause we were, we just wanted to check some stuff out and we rolled up there and this woman's drinking a beer and, uh, I get out and I say, is the shop open? She goes, yeah, I'm working. I said, well, I want your job. All I got to do is sit around and drink beer. And it's the, but she's one of the guides there. It was hilarious. And I've mentioned them on the podcast a dozen times. I'm really pumping them up to, uh, to uh, donate some money to the cause, but they haven't done it yet. <laughs> uh, but Connor is, is a neat place, but uh, Patty Lucan would be remiss if I didn't say when you go to Cotter, you do not fish the White River, you go to the Little Red. Because Patty Lucan does not want, she wants to, everybody to know the Cotter River is like the worst river to fish in that area. And you need to go to the little rat. I, if if she heard me say anything other, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're uh, at this time. We're currently in seven seven fly, seven different fly shops. That's amazing. We we have the one up in northern BC. We're in Dooley's, um, Tim's Fly Shop by Roaring River, um, Plateau, um, Natural State. Plateau is a great fly shop. Too. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's a great fly shop in the Springfield area. Springfield, Missouri. Don't go to the Bass Pro fly shop. Go to Plateau. Plateau, it, Plateau yes. blows Bass Pro's fly shop out of the water right now. Oh. It's, it's yeah. It, and it, it's sad because you would think that Bass Pro would be with their whole line of stuff. You would think, but those guys... They, they hire guys off the street. They wouldn't hire. They couldn't afford to pay guys like us to go in and talk to people about fly rods. But Plateau is a great fly shop in Springfield, yep. Missouri. It's, it is a very good. Drink beer with the owner many a night. Yep. It's a it's a good so, shop. It is really a good shop. But, um, yeah, it's it's been amazing. Um, and we have other shops that have been uh, asking their, or they're interested in our product and we might do a little bit more expansion in the number of shops that we're going to start carrying our products mm-hmm. with, but we're our, our big focus has been not to grow too fast. We, like you said, this, yeah. this turned into something that just kind of blew up and, and went wild, and we don't want it to kind of oh. bite us in the ass. And you've only, <laughs> you've only got 500 quail now. And Lily's Landing, too. Lily's Sorry, Landing we, we are in Lily's Landing, too. That's that's another one. I, yes. I'm sitting here th- trying to think. I know it's in another shop. Lily's Landing is another one that we're in. Yeah. And I, I really think from everything I've heard, you guys have an absolutely solid product. And can I do this? Can I can I can I do this? I know we're alive on the air. And if you say no, I'll edit it out. Could I invite you when Kyle's ready in a week or two to come to Drinking on the Fly? Could I invite you to the Drinking on the Fly and see you tie I fly with your feathers. Oh shoot, yeah. With your quail yeah. feathers. Yeah, that'd be fine. Only that bass flies over uh, there though, right? No, drinking on the fly is every, every fly. fly. Okay. Uh yeah, I'm tying uh guide flies as fast as I can look them out whip them out because this is the funny thing, Kyle goes, We're gonna do a half hour show and we're each gonna tie a fly. I'm like, that sounds great. We do the first show. I tie my fly in seven minutes. Forty-five minutes later, Kyle says he's done. 
we've had an hour and a half long show before with Kyle going, oh, you've got it. Kyle's a great guy. You guys would love Kyle. You'll love him to death. But it's, it's we, we wound up doing like uh, uh, me tying a fly in a 15 to 20 minute episode. And then there's a 45 minute to an hour episode of him tying. It's, 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 it's hilarious. It's funny. We because... do the same thing here because I'll be over here tying these soft tackles like as fast as I can whip them out. And he's like still stuck on like this second shank. And I'm like, how many you got done? And he's like, the well, second shank. Especially when I'm like, game. I'm at two dozen. What's holding you up? Like, with, what's your problem? Then? Especially when you get into a game changer. You know, it's it's one of those things where I'm a very picky tire. Um, I've some people probably the best thing they could do is not ask me what I think of their fly because they might start crying. I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. I'm just really particular about my tying. And sometimes I have to remember right. it's not my fly, so I can't be as critical. So, but uh, I, I'll sit there and I'm not afraid to me. I could be six shanks in or something like that. And I'm like, oh, shit. I screwed up on that one three shanks back. I guess I'm going to have to razor blade it, you know, razor blade it, get back to that one, fix it. And then I move forward. And it's like, okay, now I like it. And then I can go back and start tying the fly. And I, it's just, it's, it's that perfectionist side of me that can't. Yeah. can't let go so that's the funny thing I, I i always say on the show i tie for so many people and so i tie guide flies i mean i just tie whip out fast mm -hmm. and so when i tie a game changer a feather game changer my friends are like can i have that and i'm like no, no. this is this was torture i, I have to <laughs> like this is the fly i go swimming for you're not getting it yeah yeah you're not, you're not getting that one and but, you know, I'll whip out a bunch of nymphs or I'll whip, whip out a bunch of uh, the crawfish patterns that I do. I'll whip those out really fast. And um, Don, who was on the podcast last week, um, I don't know if you noticed this. Did you see Don at BreamBugs.com last uh, uh, at Saba? Yeah, I think he was at Tri Lakes too. He probably, yes, he was at Tri Lakes because he told me he was coming up there. And I'm not bragging. Because I have nothing to brag about. I'm sitting there doing the uh, the dubbing brushes with Rick from Oasis Benches. And uh, Don walks by and he's like, oh, are you doing saltwater flies? I'm like, well, yeah, we're doing some. I said, but here's one I tied. And I gave him, and I think it's okay for me to push this out because the blog should already be out on breambugs.com. I showed him a fly and he goes, I'll take two dozen. I'm like, what the hell? Nobody's ever bought my fly. I've gotten beer for my flies before. But he wound up buying two dozen flies. And so now we're sort of talking about tying flies. Mm -hmm. But the flies that I want to tie for me are not well, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it on the line. I wanna I wanna get a hold of one of those quail skins and I'll buy one from you. We'll talk after the show. But I want to tie a crawfish pattern in a size 10 on that quail. I think that's going to be amazing. I want to tie it on a jig hook so it comes up and it's sitting. I think it's going to be a killer panfish fly and smallie fly. And even for medium-sized trout, I think it's going to be awesome. And it, I, if I were going to do it for a carp, I'd probably drop it down to like a size 14, size 16. But I think it would still work and still using. Anything for the pinchers other than the feathers. We can talk about that later. But um, it was amazing to me just how friendly everybody was down mm -hmm. there. And I whipped out all those flies for him. I whipped out 20 of them. I went over to Dooley. Dooley had, uh, he had 20 of what I needed and everything else. And I whipped them out. And then I've come home and I've played with so many things. And I've done so many things. And I think it's really cool. But you guys have an awesome product that people don't know about and they need to get in their life. It's it when when we first got doing it, like I said, we she was doing soft tackles and collared nymphs, and I was playing around with buggers and game changers and matukas and some some other bigger nymphs too. And then, it was, but you know, you get you get into like your style of tying, and, and sometimes uh -huh. I actually have to really. Or, or well, okay. She has to get on my case about quit tying with bucktail and start tying with more of our quail. <laughs> and uh, my and and so I have to kind of like okay, I gotta go back to the quail feathers and start tying with that style. But 
you know, I'm, I'm doing the game changers, the coil buggers, some some of the NIM stuff, and she's doing the soft tackles. And then I got someone else who was like, what about carp flies? I was like, oh, yeah, you totally could do a collar for the carp. And then, like I said, that, the, uh-huh. the uh, Chinook Wind Outfitters, she's like, this is going to be perfect for cheeks on salmon flies. And I was just like, I never would have thought of that. But I'm not, I'm yeah. in southern Missouri. I don't have salmon and steelhead style flies to be tying to be fishing with and and uh-huh. you know have that R and D kind of right in front of me. So that's uh, you know that's unique. This is what absolutely kills me. This is what absolutely kills me. All the time. You're in Missouri. I'm in Missouri. We're literally straight across the state. Mm-hmm. I've got the Mississippi River where the fish glow in the dark so you can sight cast to them. And you guys have wonderful fisheries. But so many people have asked me, well, is this a trout fly or is this a bass fly? I We have that problem um, a lot. I, I'm yeah. like, it depends on how you fish it. Yep. Because trout act like bass when the water's high, you know. And it's it's so difficult, and I don't think enough people understand if it'll catch a trout, it'll catch a bass. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it, one of the. I, I used to work in a fly shop years ago. I was in Cabela's in uh, Kansas City, and the first thing you hear. I've been there. That's a that's a neat Cabela's. I've been there. That is a neat. It it, it really is a unique one, especially for the fly shop that it is, because a lot of them only have yeah. just like a little like shelf or a wall and it's like yeah that's the fly shop no we actually had a a full in fly shop rods all this stuff but you people would walk by and be like oh that's just trout fishing and i'm just like no it's not (laughs) i mean you you, everything eats something and you can imitate the something and you can catch it i mean you could go fishing for for gar you could go fishing for for carp you you have bluegill crappie Uh white bass striper hybrids um it, you could go fishing for minnows if you really wanted to. I mean, I don't want to talk shit. I don't want to talk shit, but we had a, a place here in town, and uh, it's not there anymore. But I went in there one time, and I was there like, "Can I help you?" I said, "I'm looking for fly fishing supplies, fly tying supplies." And they said, "We've only got stuff for crappie. You've got marabou." By the pound. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, you've got the hooks I need. But the guy was such a ass about it. It really turned me off. And I don't think people understand enough that if you're making a good bug, you can catch so many species on oh, it. Oh, yeah. I've got a catfish on a woolly bug. Yeah. More than once. We get asked that a lot, actually, at the shows, because a lot of people think trout when they think fly fishing. And so they go Uh over to my little thing of all the soft tackles or the prince nymphs I've tied, and then they're like, oh, what's this for? And like, anything that eats a bait fish. And they're like, but not trout. I'm like, yeah, you you can catch trout on this. Here's a trout eat bait fish. Here's a here's a shins meadow. Um. Just it's just a little. It's in the white. You have to throw like. Oops, sorry. I'll, it, yeah. For for those that can see it, but here's yeah. a little shan's minnow. It's it's basically just a little, maybe three and a half inch minnow pattern, and this was the first streamer pattern. Um, she she didn't really do a whole lot of streamer fishing when I we, didn't even know it existed <laughs> when we first met, and so I kind of introduced her to it, and she was just like, "Oh my goodness, this is a thing," and. Uh, so I'm trying to show her how to fly cast with, with streamers because it, it's, it's different. It's a lot different to, to go from dry flies uh-huh. to, to streamers to say the least. Uh-huh. And she's like, there's a fish over there that keeps rising. See if you can catch it. I was like, I, I, I was trying to focus on teaching her how to the, do the streamer thing. And so I'm like, all right. So I cast her over there. Boom. I had a 14 inch Brown eat this little white Shannon's minnow. And yep. people are just like, really? It's just like, yeah. The minnow is probably the singular most desirable food source for every, whether it's a, whether it's a minnow or a, a, a shiner, a, a creek chub, um, 
any sort of small bait fish. It's it's the lowest item totem pole on the, on the thing. Everything wants to eat it. Fresh water, salt water. I mean, and that's personally why I love streamer fishing so much is the, the species diversity. And I mean, you could go out there with nymphs and you could probably catch bass and you could go catch carp and you could go catch trout and you could go get other things. But I, it's, it's that bleeding into musky and saltwater and striper and mm-hmm. hybrids and, and, that, that that's just me I, i'm a big streamer guy and I, I really love that diversity and that wide range of, of how it appeals to it yeah i love top waters but i hate small flies and so if you say no i'll edit it out but i have a question mm-hmm. do you guys have a color that's a, a creamy color that i can take and make a master splinter so i can tie a tail onto the end of it and then wrap the feathers like a game game changer with quail so that i get that nice beautiful movement underneath and then wrap that across the top with the foam so it stays on top of the water is that possible with a quail the i mean just on a, on a short on a, on a very short shank stinger hook yeah just to have something to pulse across the water i think that would be I think that would be an, a great way to use feathers that we haven't used them before. And I'm just talking out loud. Oh, yeah. Um, I I have like dark gray to light gray, like a creamy ginger yeah. to like white. Yeah. I, I have a wide, we have, we, we have, well, excuse me. Have you tried, have you tried to do like a mouse pattern, top pattern with that feather, just move them back and forth and pulsating? I, I haven't personally. I, I've, That's a really good idea. Though. It's, it's a good idea. To I, play I, I want to try that. I, I'm just saying, I want to try that. That's that, I think that would be great for bad I, of an evening. I have, I have a difficulty getting away from rabbit strip to tie a, a master <laughs> splinter. I mean, rabbit's a beautiful material in its own right. It is. But I think that feather will just be more active and it'll give off a little bit more uh, vibration in the water. I want to try that. I'm just saying, I want to try that. I think that'd be a great fly to try. Yeah, yeah. No, that... and I think that'd be a great additional use of that material to do a a feather-bottomed master splinter. I think that would be beautiful. Yeah, yeah it definitely could be something that you could, could mess around with and, and it'd be another use. Like, it's, everyone has their own filter for the way they see things. And that's, that's something different than what I would have thought of to use it for. And and that's the great thing about fly tying is we all have our own ideas, Mm -hmm. but the way you're describing the way you've described the quail all night with it, not being, it's sort of, it's sort of, it's full, but it's not overly full. It, it, It seems like the perfect feather where it's better than pheasant. But it's, I think that would be a great way to, to do that, to palm it across the top and lay it down and get that nice movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds, we, we got to talk about, you have to come on drinking on the fly and I'll tie one of those. How's that? I'd, I, I'm known for being a bit of a mad scientist behind the vice. I, I know fly tires <laughs> dungeon. He, he's got the, the whole mad scientist <sighs> nailed down, but yes. I, I've been, t- been called a bit of a mad scientist. I'll, I'll take about four or five, maybe even six different streamer patterns. I'm like, I like this idea and that idea. And next thing you know, yeah. I got like a drunken disorderly, a swimming Jimmy, a double deceiver. Um, and uh, um, maybe like a, a double bunny. And I got all that stuff fused into one fly. And someone would be like, oh. did you forget the kitchen sink? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but that's that's the beauty of fly tying, yep. isn't it? Well, guys, this has been an awesome show, and I'm definitely buying some stuff. Um, if you go to Dooley's Fly Fishing, you say 15%. Any of the other places they mentioned, Plateau, Natural State, they're great fly shops. Um, just shop with them. Check out these pheasant, or these uh, <laughs> pheasant, Jesus. Quail. These quail feathers. <laughs> You can tell somebody's had a little too much beer tonight. I took off early to prep for your show, and I think I drank a little too much. <laughs> but come back and li- and check these guys out. It's The Fly Armory on Facebook. 
and the fly armory on Instagram, and then I don't know your TikTok. It'd be the, so the, the, the fly that. armory on TikTok as well. We're we're hoping to eventually have a website, but like I said, we're we're trying to take things slow with the business, so we'll, we'll hopefully yeah, be there soon. I, I definitely would, but I would definitely look at doing some of those specialty skins like those guys do on Facebook because that's a that like people are sitting at their phones at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday to see what's coming up and to pick their numbers. Yep. Um, but you guys have been great, and it's nice to talk to people from Missouri for a change. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean it's it's a unique state and it's very underrated. We have so much to offer here from so many different there's so many species here and and it's there's so much here and people just kind of forget about it It, yeah i mean we've got we've got the jack's fork which is a smallmouth protected stream that is beautiful yep uh the current river which we have the devil's well in if you go between acres and pull tight you've got the devil's well have you guys been to the devil's well I, i haven't been to the well i've been to the current a few times but the devil's well is well worth the float trip Hmm. it's it's beautiful and if you go up and you put it above that you can go past the old baptist hospital that's cool and when the uh ticks aren't out you can go in and look at the falling down structure it's really awesome missouri has so many great things like the piney river the gasconade I mean, the James River Water Basin. There are so many great things to do in Missouri, guys. Uh, if you're looking for a float trip, I was looking the other day, the 11 point. Yep. Absolutely awesome. I mean, so many great places to float and fish and so many different opportunities between trout and smallies. Um, we we kind of kicked the ditch pickles to the side. <laughs> we... We, we got a lot of uh, the spotted bass or the Kentuckys. We got a lot yep. of those, too. Mm-hmm. Um, we yep. have so much white and, bass, too. That That's that's in full-fledged right now is white bass times. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got a lot of lakes. We've got lakes, and you can – Yep. The white – and this is my question. Have you gone down and done the white bass between – was it Norfolk Lake and Bull Shoals Lake? Mm-hmm. And when they hit the dam, they're just – you're just pulling them out hand over foot. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the 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 one thing we really don't have much of is stripers, but we have a lot of those in Oklahoma and Arkansas, and uh-huh. you got those big lakes that have them. And that's another one we really like to produce uh, to chase after. And we actually do have some musky in the state too. A lot of people don't know about that. Um, yeah, the musky are kind of few and far between, and kind of overfished from what I've read. Mm-hmm. At, um fellows fellows lake you have hazel creek palm de terre well fellows lake is one that's not over yep. the ones at bush wildlife refuge which are closer to me yep. those are way over oh yeah you yeah. can get up north by hazel creek and other stuff like that you got a little bit more it's it's removed and far away from stuff palm de terre is a hard lake to fish it's so big and deep and all we have is kayaks. Yeah, so. we all we have is kayak too. Yeah. So I mean, that's a little bit different game versus having a boat to buzz over here, drop in, hit this. You're on kayak flyer. We talk about kayak fishing and fly fishing. That's all we I do. Mean, you know. So yeah. we. So I would love. I would honestly love to um, get you on drinking on the fly, and I would honestly love for my wife and I to meet up with you two and go fishing sometime. Like, yeah, we, that'd be awesome. We. That would be great. Yeah. So, guys, I know we ran a little long tonight. We're at 108 minutes. It's going to be 112 minutes by the time we get everything done. But I want to say thank you again. And can you just plug everything in your own words for where people can find you? We, uh, You can find us, on, like I said, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, TikTok. We are the Fly Armory. And uh, send us a message, and uh, we get back to you as soon as we can. And uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. We also have yep, some colors. Um, if you private message us that other fly shops, they don't carry. You have to specifically buy from us. So there's the key. Oh, so somebody can message you and buy directly from oh, yeah. you. I didn't yep. know that. Yep. If, if need be, I can I can pull out the old phone and, and take some pictures and or video or something. And which one do you want? <laughs> 
So they just need to message you via one of those social media apps to get yeah, the app? Yeah, or even call us, our phone number. Yep. On our business card, I believe. Okay, well, I wasn't going to put that out unless you want And to. then, um, oh, uh, email. There's a word. Yep, email. We we have email as well on, on there. But um, but for the most part, we're, we're trying to focus on the social media uh front but we do uh we do have email and 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 our phone number on our card i'll just blog nick dooley my friend again say 15 percent promo code kayak when you shop with nick dooley and nick can get you whatever you want to at dooley's fly fishing.com he can get you whatever you want to from fly armory and i'm gonna tell you what this has been a great conversation i look forward to getting you guys on drinking on the fly because i want to see I want to do like a four episode set with Jess tying one and Jared tying one and me tying one and then an hour and a half of Kyle tying one. <laughs> if, if, if I do a game changer, it might be uh, me that's tying longer than him. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think anybody could take more time than Kyle. Guys. This has been great. This is Sean from Kayak Flyer. Hey, we've got a really great guest next week. Next week, we've got a guy I met down at Salbug. I've got Mike on the show. And I tell you what, we try to bring quality every week like this week. Next week is not quality. I'm going to tell you what, this guy is honoring as the day is long. You'll love to listen to the episode. We'll have him on, and we'll talk to all of you next time.